Welcome to a session on the interdisciplinary study of synergy. I really hope that participants, presenters, and observers will enjoy these multidisciplinary explorations. In the present talk, I will focus on the synergy that drives the evolutionary dynamics in biology and in economics. Let's start defining synergy. The Wikipedia defines synergy as the creation of a whole that is greater than the simple sum of its parts. This definition seems a bit too simple for our purpose. One way of looking at synergy is to focus on its outcome. If the outcome cannot be explained by the simple sum of its parts, we speak of the existence of synergy. Not always uh, can we find simple sums. Sometimes the addition of many parts produces some, something completely different. Then we speak about emergence and the processes producing these emergences are often called synergy. Uh, the term synergy is not very old. Uh, when we Google the word synergy in documents over the last 200 years, we see that it's only in the last 20, 10 years that synergy has become quite popular. Synergy not only refers to creating things, it also implies increased efficiency. Here we have an example of a filter, uh, where different components filter with different efficiency of fluid. It's only when the forms one and three join that we have a total control of the fluid. That means that only in joining forms one and three do we have an actual synergy. Synergy in information is also very important. Here we see that the explorations by dots in dark blue are less efficient than explorations of dots in light blue. That is because the dots in light blue somehow coordinate the actions producing a synergy. As we see, synergy is referred to in many cases which we don't understand what's actually happening. In the case of chemical reactions, however, we will have better knowledge. Uh, the properties of water, which is formed by joining hydrogen atoms with oxygen atoms, uh, is, are completely different from the component parts. I mean, water is, is a liquid, oxygen and hydrogen are gases, they are inflammatory, uh, water is, is not uh, inflammatory, doesn't react with fire. So uh, there is no way of uh, producing the properties of water by knowing the properties of hydrogen or oxygen. However, after the advent of uh, quantum chemistry, we can explain, predict, and uh, analyze these processes in a very de detailed way. That means then that when we refer something to a synergetic or to synergy, we actually are recognizing our ignorance about what's behind that process. And when a new theory arises, like in this case quantum chemistry, synergy is not useful anymore and we have more specific ways of describing those processes. Many years ago, Adam Smith uh, had a hinge about uh, the invisible hand in the markets of some forces which produced emerging properties. Uh, he didn't specifically use the concept of synergy in, in recordable ways, but certainly he referred to synergy. And uh, one way of looking at this synergy is doing simulations models in which we have different agents, like here in these photographs, uh, colored differently, some exploiting, for example, minerals, the other ones exploiting food, uh, some are thick and fat with food, some are high and tall because they have many minerals, some have both, and we can then simulate what happens in these situations and see how actually the synergy arises in them. And that we have done here in, in this case, in which we have miners and, and farmers interacting, and see how they produce the synergy. And what comes out actually is very interesting. Uh, in this simulation model, 
of course, we can have a complete insight of what happens. Of what happens, we have the total uh, quantity value of the different variables. We have the point value uh, of the variables, so we know what's happening. And what's hap happening here is that uh, division of labor produces a synergistic way of doing business. If all agents are the same in this game, uh, the creation of wealth is very low. When we have division of labor, when we have miners and farmers doing different jobs, we have a synergy between them, which increases the uh, accumulated wealth enormously. That means that uh, somehow uh, Adam Smith's invisible hand does uh, represent a case of synergy in economics. A remarkable finding in biology is that division of labor is not exclusive to human beings. In ant societies, as shown here, bees, in most, or if not in all, social insects and social animals, we find important division of labors. Uh, this division is, of course, different in different species, but it's always present. I mean, it seems no way of increasing efficiency in the animal world without the use of division. Uh, this, of course, is known among humans. I mean, division of labor in, in modern society is much stronger than in the past. It's getting stronger and stronger every day, which means then that division of labor is an important source of structure, and, and we need to understand how it works both in biology and in economics. The economic view presented here in a very simplified form shows that the division of labor is the driver of the synergy that produces efficient economic markets. Division of labor also creates synergies among plants and animals. Peter Kornick presented many examples of this. But how can we study and analyze the phenomena that produces synergy and their dynamics? How can we grasp empirically or experimentally the working of synergy? How can we quantify synergy? In this example, we show how we can quantify uh, synergy in social settings. That is, uh, here we show that uh, societies of different sizes show different levels of synergy. That means that in small societies, individuals work more, uh, spend more energy per capita than in large societies. For example, here among the bees, in smaller colonies with fewer numbers of individuals, the uh, expenditure of energy per individual is much higher than in larger groups of bees. We see the same in different ant species, in some cases the difference is much stronger, and we see it also in human settlings, in, in cities in uh, Brazil, Denmark, and uh, the USA. Uh, this shows that the synergy is not an abstract concept, that synergy, at least in societies here, can be measured and can be quantified. If division of labor and synergy are both at work in economics and in biological processes, how can we create a common conceptual framework that allows economists and biologists to exchange their experiences and build upon each other's discoveries? I propose to start with the theory of biological evolution, and specifically with the inclusive fitness theory and its working in evolution. Both living organisms and human economies suffer evolution. In both, synergy plays a central role. Let's see if we can build an expanded inclusive fitness theory that is relevant for both economic and biological evolution. A very important insight of Darwin was the concept of natural selection. That means that if somehow a population is being selected for certain characteristics, like in this case, red beetles are not eaten, whereas green beetles are eaten by these birds. Then the population changes, 
And uh, this change in population genetics is the motor of evolution. That means natural selection drives evolution. Uh, here we see how, it, uh, how this schematic representation can be visualized. Uh, in biology, we have uh, this natural selection process, which uh, leaves individu individuals to survive, which then mate, they reproduce, they produce phenotypic variations, they express phenotypically, they have to adapt to environments, then they suffer selection again, etc. But this natural selection cycle has, of course, other cycles. We're also uh, described by Darwin. In this case, we show here the sexual selection cycle. That means the way individuals mate, the way they attract uh, their mates, the way they select their mates will influence the long-term fitness also. That means that the way they mate is subjected to selection pressure also. Which means then that we have a complex uh, set of hypercycles which uh, underlay uh, evolution. And uh, in the last 20 years, we know that these uh, two hypercycles are uh, completed by other ones, uh, specifically the inclusive fitness cycle, which implies that uh, the selection probability of an individual depends on what the friends do, of what the family members do, of what the neighbors do. I mean, the survival value of an individual also depends on others. This is called inclusive fitness. And somehow this inclusive fitness is related to synergy. That means that if you live in a group in which you interact with others, for example, through division of labor, which produces synergy, your selection value increases. That means synergy affects inclusive fitness and therefore is a driver of biological evolution. This way of looking at classical concepts, both in biology and in economics, allow us to escape from the classical framework of economics, the classical framework of biology, and try to look for a new framework in which both biology and economy can interchange ideas. This framework has to be interdisciplinary, including insights not only from economics and biology, but from other fields as well. In our session, we had very interesting talks collecting different views. Hermann Haken spoke on synergistics in complex systems. Peter Kornick presented a synergy approach in biological systems. Wander Jager illustrated examples of synergy in, on global issues. Juan Carlos Correa explored synergy between motorists and motorcyclists in urban mobilization. Laura Medina Stan spoke about synergetic economics in networks. Marcus Schwaninger presented how to organize for sustainability with an architecture for synergy. And Idris Jamil Aberkain spoke on the multiscale synergy of the blue knowledge economy. I think that we have shown that by understanding the working of synergy, we will open numerous novel vistas in different disciplines that will help us advance science. Thank you for your attention.